Hi, this is Jar Citizen Gamer. Tonight, I'm going to kind of talk to you off the cuff, and I don't know what I'm going to include in the background, but this may not be a visually oriented presentation, so if you want to surf the web while you're listening, that's perfectly understandable. The freedom of the internet allows us to sometimes have a forum or to say things that would other otherwise just be completely ignored. And I feel that, especially on my channel, there's something that I have to say. Now, it's about Star Citizen. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think it's any hate or anything like that. I love what they've done with it. I love the direction it's going, for the most part. It comes down to one basic promise that they need to fulfill in order to really keep the dream alive. You see, ever since Freelancer came out, years and years ago, it was kind of Chris Roberts' last big hurrah before he went off and did movies. Freelancer is kind of commonly known as the game that, for the most part, killed the flight sims because of its control scheme. I mean, everyone after that kind of came out with this point-and-click interface, and there was no more X-Wings, there were no more Wing Commanders. Free Space was about the, the last thing that you could get somewhat close to it. Well, it was very close, it was dead on, actually. But then it kind of petered off. You have Strike Suit Zeros and things like that. And these are fun games. Don't get me wrong. They have their place. But Star Citizen was pitched on the idea of being a throwback to, to Wing Commander with, real, with more realistic physics. And that was, the, that was the big draw. There are a lot of us who have been absolutely starving for an experience like this to come out again. It's been a desert. And... Yes, they did say that it would control with a mouse like Freelancer with a joystick like Wing Commander. But inside of that, the mechanics were specified in that statement, contrary to what people like to use it in this defense of the current state of controls. What they did actually say is that it would not control like Freelancer, no point and click. And what do we have today? Point and click. It's something called interactive mode, I am. It's kind of a reverse virtual stick, meaning that you put the cursor over the target and the closer your cursor, your, your ship aligns with the where your target is, the slower the movement. It's uh, as opposed to deflection being faster away from the center of the targeting reticule, it's faster uh, away from where you put your, where your cursor is. So it allows for more of an automated uh, feel to flight, but it's a reverse virtual stick. But on top of that, they've added the aiming layer, which is almost verbatim pulled from Freelancer. It's this, this kind of control, which has been consistently shown to be about 30% faster for killing. And this is where the problem starts to really build up when you look at the grand scope of the game. And not just a little arena commander forum that a lot of groups out there like to tout as being the end-all be-all of the game um, there's one squadron in particular um, they're just hot and bothered about leaderboards thinking that if you're not on leaderboards then your opinion has no value and it's disgusting frankly because I've disabled my leaderboard rankings and I, I have no intentions of ever enabling them. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is testing the game and not trying to stroke my e-peen to feel better about myself playing this some weird alpha meta or whatever's working this week and whatever's broken this week to try to make myself feel better by ranking up on some arbitrary board. I for, I, for one, have put out two different ideas that would allow everyone to control gimbals equally. And one of them was the Tucker gimbal system, which is still brought up today after, boy, it must be almost a year now. 
And that was based off of Preston Tucker's automobile design where after the steering wheel turned about 15 degrees, the center headlight would turn to illuminate around corners. Now the idea behind this was a customized dead zone that would, then you would set a customized deflection rating so that say if you if you move the stick five degrees, maybe the guns move two and a half degrees or whatnot, whatever you set it to. And it would be saved on the ship's interface, not so much as your controllers, because every ship handles differently and what one percentage is on one ship is maybe not going to be as effective on another. And that was a fairly popular idea. But it still dealt with, has some problems with, uh, it's a very, uh, it can be a very difficult, difficult mode to master overall. I think it's a very worthwhile one, but I'd say it's very hard. And because of that, I came up with a second idea. The second idea is called sensor tracking gimbals. Currently in the game, we have different missile types that track on either cross section, which is the physical image of the ship, infrared, obviously heat, and EM, the electromagnetic transmissions that ships put out. And what I did is I said, why don't we apply this to gimbals? The system's already in place. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. What it would require is that basically the ships uh, trying to get a lock on the one in front of it would have to maintain for a certain amount of time. And in the meantime, the weapons are treated effectively as fixed because they're, they're locked. And once a lock is achieved, then the weapons will begin to track. Now, it's not instantaneous tracking. It still does involve uh, slew rates, so you do have to be more of an active pilot. But it will really help get the guns on target. Of course, one of the neat things about this idea was that this would be advantages for, give you an example, we have the Hornet Tracker. And the Hornet Tracker is kind of a unique ship that, for the most part, we really don't know what it's going to do different yet. Well, I said, why don't I have the Hornet Tracker with this enhanced radar package? It can, it loses two guns. It loses a turret, essentially speaking. And I thought it should track with gimbals faster, having that large... Uh, radar dish there that radar section and also transmit to an area around itself where teammates could take advantage of its transmissions as a triangulation to help uh, their guns lock on faster and this could extend to larger ships like carriers you could transmit out to fighter groups locations and it can go the other way as well you'd have uh, EWAR ships, the electronic warfare ships, who could jam and scramble in a certain area, uh, creating these dynamic back and forth gameplay between not only individual and weapon base, but fleet and group mechanics and strategies. And these uh, gimbals that would track based upon different signature types, for example, let's say that you were in a nebula and there's high electromagnetic interference then you know electromagnetic tracking is going to be a problem so there's environmental factors someone shoots a someone tries to get a lock on you uh, with infrared so you pull towards a nearby star where the infrared's gonna have trouble tracking you because obviously the sun the star in that in that sector of space is a much larger and much uh, greater heat source than the ship that uh, it's chasing this is something that even modern pilots today deal with when it comes to missile locks, especially infrared, obviously. So a good way to lose that kind of tracking is to get your plane pointed into the sun. So I thought you get environmental, you get fleet, you get individual, you get, get weapon loadouts and choices. It's all kind of there. But those are just two ideas. And that's a simplified version. It's a little bit more complex than that, but you get the gist. But other people, Goloith and several others have put out ideas and trying to basically get gimbals out of the hands of pilots directly and there is an actual reason for this not just because we don't want freelancer controls though that is a large portion of it there's a reason today that even our modern military doesn't do it turning piloting focus into aiming focus is very deadly for the pilot for anyone on the ship a pilot can get into a kind of situation where they get tunnel vision and not pay attention to the environment around them flight centric combat the pilot is completely focused on what he's doing 
where his ship is, what his positioning is, what's his strategy, how is he going to go ahead and get behind his target. All that's the focus. When you move into aim-centric, your major concern is to put your cursor in front of your target and keep firing. Yes, you can still do all the same maneuvers and whatnot you can in the other ships, strafing and whatnot, but the focus has shifted. And also you're ridiculously accurate because, all come on, open a folder on your desktop. There you go. Congratulations, you just won a battle. It's really, it's a really is about as deep as that. And do we really need another game that shallow? I can go on Steam right now and uh, grab several. Just download them for pink for peanuts on any Steam summer sale and play them, and it'll be the exact same gameplay I'm talking about. But why, with all these ideas and these the raw data that we have put up? with time trials, demonstrations, everything, has it been basically ignored? And this really comes down to the heart of it right here. I am is the white whale. It's Chris Roberts' white whale. You see, he was basically removed from the freelancer project before it was finished. And I truly believe for all intentions, good or bad or whatnot, that this is his attempt to finish Freelancer. And contrary to the statements that were made, this has become Freelancer 2, the white whale, the one that got away. And I believe he'll finish it. I believe it'll have all the tech he's shown, landing on planets, boarding, boarding on ships. It'll have all of that. But the heart and soul, the part that makes flying games flying games, will be dead. Now, I won't lie and say that I haven't considered at one point asking for a refund. But I'm not going to. And not because I think that the main universe is going to be amazing uh, or not amazing. In fact, I think it will be great. But they're going to allow people to mod and make their own servers I think for people like me who are looking for something deeper we're gonna go that route and I will always promote those servers on this channel I will point people to them and do everything that I can to make them healthy um, is it possible that they change their mind and turn this around sure sure it could happen but it's not as early in the game as we thought as it was at one point. You know, uh, when when I am first came out a long, long time ago, they kind of rolled all the complaints into this Katamari and kind of left it all there to die. And it's about 1,600 pages now. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, forum post uh, section in their entire era, in their entire, all the forums. But it's just ridiculous. And we've seen some... We've seen a lot of battles, a lot of push back and forth on it. And I guess it kind of all comes down to where gaming is going in general these days. You see, gaming is kind of getting dumbed down. When I was growing up, games were damn hard. You know, I mean, if you didn't have the skills to beat a game, you just weren't going to beat it. You had to practice. You had to learn. But... Like, I have a lot of the uh, the Batman games, except the most recent one, because that thing is going to be pretty much borked for PC forever. And the combat's fun. I, I won't say it's not, but it's ridiculously simple. You can win pretty much constantly with two buttons. And, and that's kind of where games are going. you got quick-time events, overly simplistic combat... And it's kind of a, a symptom of a larger problem. And, and that's where, you know, I said I feel disappointment because, honestly, nobody needed the Kickstarter these controls. Nobody. These have been out there for a while. They've been out there since Freelancer. And, you know, I, I think this is a very important topic to bring up. 
as I said, the game will be finished. It will deliver on all the promises, except to me, the most important one, which was no point and click, nothing like Freelancer. And flight games are intrinsically about flight. To the heart, to the soul. And so many of us have longed for this return to some... The, the day of gaming where the, the challenge was higher and they were really trying to put you into the situation with the limited graphics they had. They, they tra desperately tried to give you that experience. But now we have all the graphics in the world and the gameplay is, de is just dead and dying. And I think this is why we see the rise of so many indie developers. Because a lot of people are tired of being spoon-fed their gaming experience. But unfortunately, I think the vast majority of people out there love being spoon-fed their gaming experience. Now I'll keep reporting Star Citizen news. Elite really Dangerous News and whatever the heck else I feel like because it's my channel. But I wanted to bring this up. I wanted to put these cards on the table. Because to me, Star Citizen is the culmination of everything I've ever wanted in a sci-fi game. You know, a lot of us game because you know we live in a world that is full of misery and racism and religious violence and things like that and politics and all that garbage. And you know, I look at sci-fi and things like that as what we could be if we would stop killing each other and doing all these horrible things, fighting over a grain of sand in a desert of the universe. And to me, it's a way to step out and away from this. And the deeper, the more rewarding, the the more uh, the more rich, uh, and a game is, the, the more I can become immersed in it. And maybe some of you feel the same way, and maybe some of you don't. But you know, just leave comments and and, and things down below. And uh, you know, I I don't expect everyone to agree with me on this. And if I've touched a nerve, I do apologize. It's not trying to insult anybody by far but I just wanted to let you know where I come from on this because I grew up with basic stuff you know like Atari 2600 was what I cut my teeth on you know this the, the quote-unquote space sims you had on there with a little little joystick with one button and and such and to me you know uh, my eyes are horrible you know physically I'm not capable of of ever being a fighter pilot when I was a kid, that's what I wanted the most. But, so, I just, uh, you know, the, the spirit was willing, the body was not. <laughs> and uh, so for me, it's it's like the one chance I will ever have to, to be in that world or to experience a piece of what I couldn't do in the real world. So I love them. They're important to me. They they, they, they fill a void. Um, probably one of the only tangible voids that, that I can actually define very well in my life. So, anyway, guys. Uh, if you have suggestions, as I said, you know, I haven't... Uh, you guys give me great suggestions in the videos, but if there's news or something, if there's topics on other games or, or just weird things that are just on your mind, I can't emphasize it enough. Just feel free to tell me what, what you're thinking. Ask questions. Uh, I really do want this to be an open forum because... You know, as I said in my first video, Citizen Gamer is not just about Star Citizen. When I say Citizen, it's because the difference between a citizen and a civilian, uh, if you wanted to go to the Starship Troopers analogy, where, you know, the citizen is invested. They're absolutely invested in, in what's going on, and the civilian just kind of lives within it. Well, a lot of people are truly invested in gaming and the gaming culture, and things that go on in there and I am as well and so if you're invested and you have thoughts feel free share them and uh, I'll be happy to read them and, and talk about them anyway guys sorry for the long rambling video just some stuff I had to get off my chest this is Jar Assistant Gamer thanks for listening